In case you didn't catch it, last year Salesforce unveiled Data Cloud, a real-time data platform that provides a single source of truth for all customer data. If you heard the name Genie floating around, that's what Data Cloud is now. Salesforce and their name changes, am I right? In this video, we'll go over how to enable Salesforce Data Cloud for your org so that you can be set up in no time. Let's get into it. In October, Salesforce announced that customers can use Data Cloud for free for up to 10,000 unified profiles. This is what's known as a $0 SKU. In other words, a Salesforce product line that doesn't incur any costs. September 19th marked the date that you could get started with your Data Cloud via the Your Account section of your Salesforce org, although the rollout was not instant for all customers. So who can use it? Well, before we get into that, it's important to be aware of the prerequisites so you don't run into any problems. At the time of recording, Data Cloud is reportedly only available for orgs that are located in North America and EMEA. You must be a Sales Cloud or Service Cloud customer on Enterprise Edition or above. So this is also including Unlimited Edition. You can check this in the Company Information section in Setup. You must also activate Data Cloud in your production org. In other words, it's not available in sandboxes. Alternatively, you can sign up for a Salesforce trial, either Enterprise or Unlimited Edition, and activate Data Cloud there. Lastly, you will need to provision Data Cloud via the Your Account section of your org. To access this, you will need the Manage Billing permission on your user profile or enabled via a permission set. System administrators have this enabled already. To check your profile, go to Setup and then Users. Find your user record and click on the hyperlinked profile. The Manage Billing permission is found under Administrative Permissions. If this is not checked for you, create a permission set. To check the permission sets assigned to your user, hover over the Permission Set Assignments sub-tab on your user record. In the race to the top of your industry, one detail can trip you up, like the handoff of work, for example. But don't worry, it doesn't have to be this way. Work Relay, a Salesforce app by NeoStella, ensures the right work is done by the right person at the right time. No dropped batons, we promise. Team up with Work Relay today at salesforceblend.com forward slash work. Data Cloud comes with its own concepts and therefore a learning curve. So you should be clear on its purpose before you enable it in your org. The purpose of Data Cloud is to combine a range of data points from various data sources. This data can be both demographic and behavioral. For example, mobile app engagement, e-commerce purchases and customer support cases. We will revisit the concept of unified profiles in the next section. It does not merge records, but it generates segments that can be activated among different Salesforce products, such as Marketing Cloud and Flow for the core platform products. Think of segments as the fuel that powers the engines. Lastly, Data Cloud is not designed to store masses of data from various data sources. This is why a data lake or data warehouse is required. Data Cloud is a usage-based product, meaning that you pay for what you use. There's a difference between the credits you're awarded and how that translates into unified profiles. A unified profile combines a range of data points from various data sources. This data can be both demographic and behavioral. Note how this is a unified profile. The terminology here is important as Data Cloud unifies records and does not merge them. While they are combined data points, the source records where the data has come from still exist as they were. So when you pay for credits, you're paying for the processing power to unify data from various sources. Hence why the number of unified profiles is approximate, as some organizations will be more demanding than others in terms of their data unification. As you can see in the table, different Salesforce editions get different amounts of credits. Unified profiles have been calculated based on 25 credits per unified profile. Now that we understand what Data Cloud is for and how it works, Let's dive into how you actually enable it. The first step is with your account. Provided you checked the prerequisites, you should see your account when clicking on the cog icon. Click Browse and Buy. As you land on the page, you will see the products your organization has. Scroll down to All Products, where it's likely that Data Cloud will be first in the list. Click Add to Cart. You will be asked how you want to sign the zero amount order form. I chose to sign it via email, which sent the e-signature contract through. However, provisioning does take some time. Upon signing the order form, I did not receive confirmation or access to Data Cloud setup. 
Step two. Once provisioned, you will receive an email with the subject line, welcome to Data Cloud. The Data Cloud permissions will only become available after Data Cloud is purchased, albeit for a zero dollar amount, and provisioned in the org. There are two types of Data Cloud permission sets. Data Cloud Admin, which gives access to Data Cloud Setup, and Data Cloud User, which we'll cover in step number five. You can check whether these are available in your org by going to Salesforce Setup, searching for permission sets, and viewing the list. To add the permission sets to your user record, go to Salesforce Setup and search for Users. On your user record, hover over the Permission Set Assignments subtab and click Edit Assignments. Move the Data Cloud Admin permission set from the left-hand list to the right. Step 3. Let's move on to Step 3. Alongside Salesforce Setup, you will now have Data Cloud Setup accessible from the COG dropdown. Visiting this for the first time, you should land on the Guided Setup page. When you start the process, each of the steps will be checked off. You don't have to do anything. This process took approximately 15 minutes in our org, which is likely less complex than the average org. Step 4. After the guided setup process are completed, you'll be redirected to the page to connect Marketing Cloud with Data Cloud. Our organization doesn't use Marketing Cloud, so this threw me off somewhat. However, in the sidebar of Data Cloud Setup, you can see a number of other data sources. I chose Salesforce CRM. Step 5. In Step 2, we assign the Data Cloud Admin permission set to our user record, which gave us access to the Data Cloud Setup menu. The Data Cloud user permission also needs to be assigned. To add the permission set to the correct user records, one by one, go to Salesforce Setup and search for Users. On the user record, hover over the Permission Set Assignments subtab and click Edit Assignments. Move the Data Cloud Admin permission set from the left-hand list to the right. To add the permission set to the correct user records, go to Salesforce Setup and search for permission sets. On the permission set record, click Manage Assignments. Move the relevant users from the left-hand list to the right. To add the permission set to the correct user record or records, or multiple users with the same profile like the marketing user profile, for example. As you cannot add a permission set to a profile, you will need to. Pull a user record of all users with that profile, including the user ID field. Export the report. Change the user ID header to assignee ID and create another column for the permission set ID. Go to the permission set in Salesforce and copy the alphanumeric ID from the URL. Paste the permission set ID into the permission set ID column in your exported sheet. Using Data Loader, do a permission set assignment insert. If you're a bit confused when you get to the data stream step, you can get stuck in with the create a data stream in Data Cloud. This module goes into getting started with Data Cloud Developer Edition, creating a data stream, as well as adding and mapping a formula field. You can find the link to this module in the description below. So, now that we know how to enable Salesforce Data Cloud, let's quickly talk about what is not included in Data Cloud 3, the non-paid for version of Data Cloud. There are a number of capabilities that you won't have access to unless you upgrade to Data Cloud Starter, which is the paid edition of Data Cloud. These include segments and activations. According to Salesforce, activation is the process that materializes and publishes a segment to activation platforms. You can create segments on any entities from your data model and then publish them on a chosen schedule or as needed. Essentially, you are taking your unified profile data beyond your Salesforce org and utilizing this data to have an impact on your customer experience. Data services. This is to up the number of credits you have to generate unified profiles, purchased in blocks of 100,000 credits. Add audiences. Similar to the segments and activations point from earlier, this relates to utilizing the data across advertising platforms to make the advertising that appears to customers or prospects highly contextual to them. Data storage. This is to up the storage you have, priced per one terabyte. It's safe to say that provisioning does take some time. I saw somewhere that this would take around 30 minutes. Upon signing the contract, I did not receive confirmation or access to Data Cloud Setup. However, in my case, it still had not been provisioned overnight, and when I went to re-add the SKU, I received an error. At a loss at what to do, I decided to leave it be. The provisioning process for us completed 24 hours after the signed order form confirmed came through. It's not always as clear cut as it may seem. And that's it. 
you now know how to enable Salesforce Data Cloud in your org. As Data Cloud is a fairly new product, this likely won't be the last time we talk about it here on the Salesforce Bank YouTube channel. What are your thoughts on it? How have your experiences been so far? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on great content just like this.